Hello and welcome back to Maker's Muse. In this video we'll be reviewing the Up Mini Platform Heater V2, which is a direct replacement for your bed on your Up Mini to improve bed adhesion and resist warping. Does it work? Is it worth 136 bucks? Well, let's find out. Before I go into the upgrade itself, let's first look at what warping is and what causes it. Here I've got a chopping board made from 3mm polypropylene plastic. All plastics expand and contract depending on temperature, and PolyPro does this quite substantially. Check out what happens when I pour hot water on just one side. Yep, that my friends is what's called warping. And in 3D printing, warp pretty much happens the same way. As each layer slowly cools, it contracts. And these forces accumulate layer by layer, till the part is pretty much completely ruined. So how can you stop warp? Well, you can't actually remove it completely. The plastic still needs to cool and contract, but you can minimize the deformation by making the prints cool slower, and more uniformly. This is why you see professional grade FDM printers like Stratasys machines use entire build ovens heated to 90 degrees Celsius or more which allow the parts to cool uniformly and at the same time. These machines have virtually no warping at all. And this is basically what the new bed does. Normally the up mini bed only heats up to about 50 degrees whereas this bed can be controlled from 50 all the way up to 80 degrees. So that's pretty hot for a heated bed. The Up Mini stock heat bed is a closed loop system. The printer simply applies voltage to it and the IC on board regulates the temperature to 50 degrees. It's pretty important to note that because this is a closed loop system, the printer has no real method of knowing if the bed is actually at temperature. So if you send a print and the extruder heats up quickly before the bed's nice and toasty, your print's gonna warp for sure because that bed wasn't at temperature. So how do you test warp? Well, I looked back over 3D printing features I know that cause warping and I came up with this. And the Up Mini pretty much printed it fine, so I had to try harder. Enter the Warpinator 5000. This is straight from your worst 3D printing nightmares. Download it and give it a try in ABS on a high fill without warping. I dare you. Not surprisingly, it warped pretty badly. You can see that although it stayed on the bed for a little while, the forces were enough to pull the little pins of the raft out of the print bed. The top of the print is fairly flat, but still a little bit bowed, meaning even after the print was complete, it was still contracting and warping. So yeah, that's a pretty bad print. Taking the up mini bed out is a nice and easy task. Simply undo two countersunk screws and slide the bed either backwards or forwards to release it. The thin ribbon cable supplies power to the bed and is really fragile. So only carefully push the locking cover free and remove it. You don't need much force at all. So do this really carefully and otherwise you'll risk breaking it. Then you simply reverse the process to fit the version 2 heat bed. I found I couldn't actually slide it from the back forwards because the added LEDs and electronics got in the way of the mounting point. So I pressed it from the front backwards and then loaded the cable and the metal contacts face towards the heat bed. And needless to say, do this with the machine uh, off and unplugged because these little cables carry a lot of current and you don't want that to short out. No. Reattach the screws and you're almost ready to go. I would also recommend a nozzle and bed level at this stage because I found mine was a little bit out after tweaking it. You know, that happens with the up minis. Even if you transport them, they can go out of alignment. So I did that and then I printed it again. Controlling the version two heat bed is logical and easy. Start by preheating for one hour in the up software so it has power and simply cycle through the temperatures using the button. It can be a little bit tricky landing on the right one, but I got there in the end. After selecting a temperature, it will display its current temperature, which is really handy for knowing if your bed's hot enough. I waited till it was at 80 degrees and stable, and then I sent the Warpinator 5000 back to it to print again. And failure, sort of. I ran out of filament. But how did the print turn out? You can clearly see that the raft stayed firmly stuck to the bed, which is a win. However, if you are in ever doubt of the forces involved in warping, check out the lifting of the plate from the heat bed. It's actually bent the plate up with the print, which is pretty insane. So let's just compare how much flatter this print is compared to the previous one. It's tons better, not perfect, but pretty amazing what a difference of 30 degrees makes. Plus also by having visual feedback, I was able to wait till I knew the bed was at stable temperature, which is really handy instead of just kind of putting your hand on it and guessing how hot it is, which is useless. Also comparing it to the previous print, you know, wow, that's a huge, 
huge difference. So thanks for watching guys, at 136 bucks plus GST and shipping, it's about 150 odd dollars for the heat bed, which is pretty spendy. But if you're like me and you've had an up mini for a couple of years, it's a great way to breathe some extra functionality into an already great 3D printer. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more 3D printing related content and reviews, be sure to subscribe to Makers Muse, it really helps me out a lot. So hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time when I 3D print an auto axe from Fallout like this because my copy of Fallout 4 hasn't arrived yet. So sad. I'll just 3D print my own Fallout. See you later guys. Bye.